Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik, director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. I am so happy that you decided to join us today. Today we have a special program for you, and we want you to stick around and see what that is, okay? Boy, is it hot outside or what? I have my water bottle right here, and I'm drinking. See how big my water bottle, water bottle is? It's big. I hope, hopefully, you guys are drinking some water too. Okay, so make sure that you drink a lot of water, plenty of water, because it's hot. If you guys go outside, make sure you, you're always with mom and dad and drinking a lot of water. You don't want to have a heat stroke or dehydrate yourself on this heat. Okay, so I have my water bottle. We're going to be playing something with an empty water bottle later in the program, and I want you guys to do that at home too, or at least try to do it at home, and I'll show you how it's done. Okay. Last week we had Johnny here. Johnny was great. I watched the video and I loved it. I loved the way he did Kids Connection. And he's going to be doing more Kids Connection in the future. Not only Johnny, but we have all other characters that are going to make their appearance in Kids Connection program. And hopefully you guys like them too. Okay? Let us know how you like Johnny. And if you want to have Kid come out and visit you. By the way, Kid was going to make some visits last week but it was so hot and we didn't want to have kid outside on the sun so we asked those families to hang tight we're gonna wait until it cools down a little bit more and we'll have kid come out and visit them and if you want to visit from kid it's a social distance everyone from the sidewalk you just email us have mom or dad email us bdkidsconnection at gmail.com we'll schedule an appointment and ha I'll drive kid to have him come out and visit you at your house and say hello from a distance, okay? Let's get our program started singing our song of the day and we'll see how this is connected to our program today. Let's sing it together.
Now I invite you to bow your heads so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this hot summer day. We ask your blessings over this program. Bless each boy and girl who are watching us right now, wherever they are. Bless them, be with them, and help us get connected with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Excellent. Do you guys, have you guys seen anybody fight, argue? Have you? Have you seen anybody hit each other? Oh no! Sometimes there are some people that are mean and they hit each other. No, 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 no. We don't do that here in Kids Connection. Here in Kids Connection, it's all about love. But in our missionary story today, we're going to hear a story about a boy. A boy who someone hit him. And you'll see what happened after that person hit him. What did he do? Let's watch our missionary story. Emmanuel wanted to annoy 13-year-old Aggie during a break between French and physics classes at the Seventh-day Adventist School in Libreville, Gabon. He knew that Aggie had a short temper, so he started saying mean things. Annoyed, Aggie immediately slapped the boy on the cheek. Emmanuel didn't like being slapped, and he slapped Aggie back. Now Aggie was furious. He punched Emmanuel. Children crowded around the fighting boys. Don't stop, they yelled. Let them fight. A teacher's assistant came running, causing the children to scatter to their seats. He pulled them apart. Why are you fighting? He was mean to me, Aggie said. He hit me, Emmanuel said. You shouldn't fight. Fighting is for animals. Apologize. As punishment, the boys had to spend two hours away from the other children, quietly thinking about what they had done. It was a long two hours. After some time, Aggie whispered to Emmanuel, Why were you mean to me? I was only joking, Emmanuel whispered back. Aggie wished that he hadn't lost his temper. That summer, Grandfather sent Aggie to a Pathfinder campout. Aggie's Bible teacher also went to the campout, and he spoke for morning and evening worship. At the end of the three-week campout, he asked whether any children wanted to give their hearts to Jesus. He told them how Jesus could change their hearts. Instead of anger, he could give them peace and love. When Aggie heard that, he remembered his short temper. He remembered how his temper led to fights and made his parents unhappy. He wanted to change and he prayed, Lord, I want to follow you. Then Aggie stood up and went to the front. People were surprised to see him standing. His Bible teacher was happy that he wanted to be baptized. After baptism, when Aggie came out of the river, he felt the same as before. He thought maybe something miraculous would have happened, but everything still seemed normal. But as the days passed, he noticed that he no longer enjoyed many things of the past. His friends noticed that he wasn't easily angered like before. Just the other day, Emmanuel brought some cakes to sell in class, and Aggie didn't want to buy one. I don't want to buy anything today, he said. I'm not feeling well. Come on, buy one, Emmanuel said. No, I can't, Aggie said. Emmanuel's face twisted in anger and he slapped Aggie. But Aggie didn't feel angry at all, and he quietly walked away. He was so grateful that with Jesus' help, his days of having a short temper were over. Jesus was changing his heart. In 2017, part of the 13th Sabbath offering helped construct a high school for 280 students in Aggie's hometown of Libreville, Gabon. Thank you for helping change lives through the 13 Sabbath offering. It makes a big difference. I am so happy that he got to know Jesus and how Jesus transformed him in his heart. And he's now a new person. Hopefully, we can learn from this story and take that as an example that whenever someone does something mean to us, how do we react to those things? Let's keep them in prayer and also continue to support with our offering as missionaries are helping people to get to know Jesus in other areas of the world. Thank you for your support. <sighs> okay, it's hot. Is it hot where you are? Why well, it's hot out here. Let me drink some water. Mmm. 
It is nice and cool. Look how big my water bottle is. And I drink all this water because I need to get and to be hydrated, okay? Now what I want you guys to do, go to the kitchen, go to your living room, um, wherever you have a water bottle, okay? I'm gonna use this one because this is the one I have with me now. Mm. This is good water. I love cold water. It's refreshing. If you guys have a clear water bottle, that's fine. If you have one of the Kids Connection water bottle that you have there from the previous, remember when we were here in Kids Connection, go ahead and grab that. I'm gonna do something fun with you guys now. So I'm gonna do something fun with you guys today, okay? So here is my desk and I'm gonna show you something and I want you guys to try this at home too. First, I want you to get an empty water bottle, okay? Completely empty this one. I just finished drinking the water, okay? Then you're gonna grab two books or two boxes or whatever you can put it on one side and the other. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use these uh, two water bottles here, okay? And I'm gonna remove the cap of the water bottle, one there and the other one here. So now I have, and let's pretend that these two water bottles, okay, Kids Connection, are like books or you can put them sideways like this, but I want you guys to put them away and I want you to grab a piece of paper, okay? And put the water bottles or put the boxes or the books at a distance from those two platforms, okay? Just like this. So you have one on this side and one on this side. It could be a little bit lower too. I'm gonna use this one because it's just easier for you to see what we're, what we're doing, okay? So here I have two water bottles. They're flat on top. And you are welcome to pause the video and go get your water bottle, go get your books or go get your boxes and set up and get a sheet of paper like this one. This one is, is the one that I, we use here in Kids Connection, okay? It doesn't matter which sheet you use as long as it's one sheet of paper, okay? Now, what I want you guys to do is to put the piece of paper over the two platforms that you have. Here's one platform and here is another one, either book or boxes. Now, I want you to grab the empty water bottle that you have and try to put that water bottle on that paper bridge that you just built, okay? That you just put over. And I wanna see, I wanna see if the water bottle stands on top of the bridge. Let's see if this one stands. Oops, it did not stand. Hmm, it didn't stand, it didn't stay there. I guess it's not strong enough. Let's try it again. Piece of paper, bridge, paper, and nope, it didn't. My question to you is, are you able to make the water bottle stand on the bridge without falling? Can you do it? How can you make the water bottle empty stand on top of this paper bridge? Do you think it's possible? If you need to pause this video, pause it and try a couple times and see what can you do to make this what you cannot put another book on, on top. You just have to stand that water bottle on the piece of, of paper, on the piece of paper only, okay? How can we do this? How? Dun, dun, dun. I will show you, but pause the video, try it, and then come back and watch how it's done, okay? All right, so hopefully you had a chance to try a little bit, and now you're playing the video again. I'm gonna show you how this is possible. Are you ready? You grab the piece of paper, just like this, and you will fold, and you will make one fold that is about a half inch long, or maybe a quarter of an inch. So it folds like this, okay? And then you fold that backwards again. And then you turn it around and you fold it, just like you're building a fan, remember? 
You remember how to, how to make a fan? Okay, and then you do it again on this side. Oops, I just lost my water bottle. I'll get in a second, okay? So you fold it this way and then you fold it again, but you fold it that way and you keep turning and you keep, keep folding just like you do it. You make a, you build a fan, okay? And now I have a little, a little kids connection fan. You see that? Okay. Oh, this feels good. Yes, it feels good. Okay. Now give me one second. Let me get the water bottle. Here we go. Got it. So now I'm going to show you how you can actually make the water bottle stand between the two platforms with one piece of paper that is now folded in like an accordion. Okay. Like this. So you put that accordion there, piece of paper. It's still the piece of paper. Okay. See that? The accordion. You put that there. And now you put the water bottle on top of that piece of paper. And voila! I just made a water bottle stand on a paper bridge. Isn't it cool? Look at this. When you fold it, when you fold the paper into an accordion shape, it supported. Oops, the wind just blew it away. It supported the, the water bottle across the bridge. And, and it doesn't fall. Ha, this is amazing. It's still a piece of paper. And we were able to make that piece of that water bottle stand between the bridges on a bridge of paper. But we had to do something to that piece of paper. I couldn't have the piece of paper straight. I had to fold the piece of paper and I had to change the way the piece of paper was to make it stronger so the bridge would support the water bottle. It could have not happened without changing something to the way that the, the paper was. It could not support if it was just a piece of paper. But once you make that change, that's that gives the support and we were able to make a stand. Now you know, do something fun. Show your friends, show your grandma, your grandpa. Ask them if they know how to do it and then you show them how to do it. So now I'm gonna take this away and I'll tell you what this has to do with our, with our program for today. So in today's story, at our lesson and with our teacher, we are going to learn about a people, the Thessalonians, and what they were facing, the struggle and the difficulties they were facing. Just like when we had the piece of paper and we were trying to make the water bottle stand in the middle of that piece of paper. And what, how hard was it? They were facing some difficult times and they didn't know how to do something. They didn't know how to walk. They didn't know how to keep going. But we're also going to learn how a letter that was sent to them helped them to see and how they were able to continue to walk as, as that was the instructions on how a God that was a loving God was able to help them. Not only that, but we will also hear about this God and how this God can actually help us today in our difficult times. Sometimes when we see a problem that is too hard and we don't know how to do it, like a piece of paper, we didn't know how to build that bridge and to, we didn't know how to make the, the, the water bottle stand on that piece of paper. We had to do something to the paper to make it stand. The same way God can help us when we don't know, God can help us and change the way we're doing things and by His love, He can help us. And 
those, the story that we're here, we're here today can, we're here, can even help us uh, on, now, on our days today, as long as we keep listening to the voice of God. Now I invite you to stand up, get ready, let's sing our song of the day together to close our Kids Connection program. All right, that was a fun song. I always enjoy singing all the songs here at Kids Connection, and hopefully you guys enjoy singing them at home too with mom and dad. Tell your friends about Kids Connection and invite them to come and watch. Now let's bow our heads so we can close our Kids Connection program. Dear Jesus, thank you so much because you are our God. Thank you because of the Bible stories that we hear. And today's story, I ask that you help the kids see how you love us and how you can help us and we can count on you. And sometimes there are some changes in life and life is difficult, but we know that you can help us pull it through. We ask that you keep protecting all the boys and girls. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Great. Now, let me tell you a couple of things that are happening. Well, number one. Thank you guys for being a part of our program last week. Remember, we were in a church in a Zoom meeting and a Zoom worship where we saw all the pastors and we saw Johnny. Some of you had a chance to join that Zoom worship and be a part with Johnny and even talk to Johnny, asking some questions and answering some questions. We are going to have another worship live on Zoom coming up 
next month. And this is going to be a regular thing for our church. So get ready. We'll let you know when that comes so you guys can join us on Zoom and either see Johnny or maybe see Julia or see, or see myself or see someone else participating and being a part of that program as well. Thank you guys for joining us. Don't forget to send us an email. Let us know if it's your birthday. We have school coming up starting this week. Some of you already started homeschool last week. I saw pictures. Well, I hope that this year is a year full of success on your school and you get all your homework and you get all your schoolwork accomplishments and you do them all. And if you guys are doing the on, uh, at home, in-home uh, online school, Starting this week, I pray that God protects you, God be with you, and as you grow and as you learn, may this be an experience that you'll never forget. I pray for your safety, and I will see you guys next week on another Kids Connection program. Stick around for your Kids Connection, excuse me, for your Sabbath school class, classroom story, which is come, comes up by your teacher. Thank you for being a part and for joining us today. I love you guys, and I'll miss you. Have a great afternoon. Stay cool, hydrated, drink a lot of water. And don't forget to play the game of the water bottle and the bridge with your mom and dad or someone else. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Hello. How are you guys doing? Welcome to the kindergarten lesson for August 22nd. It's great to be here. Uh, first, I want to apologize for the sound of my last two recordings. Um, I just realized that my uh, phone, some sand got in it, and I cleaned it up, and hopefully the sound sounds a lot better than the, the last few times. And I got here my um, students, or my helpers. My, my name is Samantha. Hi, it's me again. Carlina. <laughs> All right. So this week we're going to talk about the truth. So what is the truth? <laughs> Carlina? Something that is true. Something that's true, yeah. Something that is... What, uh, what about you, Sammy? What do you think this is the truth? Um. Usually it's kind of hard to define like, but the best way, it's something, you know, it, yeah, it's something that is true, something that is false, it's something that is not deceiving, yeah? Um, I don't know, I forgot. Something, some, something that people, uh, that people say that's true, and, and, and it actually happens. Yeah, that's right, that's a pretty good definition, actually. It's the, like, the, it's like the reality of things, right? So if I say, I'm 10 feet tall, is that true? No. No, no right? <laughs> but if I say, I'm uh, 5 foot 6 and a half, <laughs> is that true? That's closer, right? But maybe if I measure it myself, it's, you know, it's not the exact, exact me measurement, but that's close enough. So. Anyways, so, so some things um, are truly the way they are, and some things, you know, are 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 not real. They're false. So, what is one thing that is actually always true? Is this, is there something that is absolutely true? Can you guys tell me what that is? God is the, the only true, the, the only one true God. Exactly. And, and He has power. That's right. Wow, Carolina, good job. That's, that's exactly it. God is all true. He there's, everything is is true about him. Every, because like Sammy said, he's so powerful. And he created this world. He created us. And we're his you know, his children. So uh, another thing that is true 
is that God loves us. So what does that, what does God loves us mean? What? Carlina? Uh, it means he has power over something? No, that he loves us. It means that he cares for us, right? He wants our, he wants our well-being. He wants um, us to be well. He wants us to be happy. He wants us to be joyful. And he wants us to, to like live a life to, you know, live in the fullest extent. That and so it, there's many things that he gives us, you know. The, and there's many things that um, that are out, outside in this world that are created where we can see His power. For example, we like to go hiking, and when we see the waterfall, it's just um, it's nature and beauty. And that's one of the things that you know God. It can remind us about God, maybe. If it rains and we see the rainbow and, and, and it's the beautiful colors, we, we are reminded that God loves us, He cares for us. Um, in that sense, because we look at that and then we see, whoa, that's so beautiful. And that brings us this strong feeling of peace and contentment and being happy. And that's how we know that God loves us. And He also, he also cares for us, meaning that he is with us, you know, wherever we are, and we can call on Him, we can talk to Him, and we, we can reach out to Him. So, that is, that is the truth about God. And, you know, the intent of God is for us to be spiritual beings, meaning that we have a, like a spiritual connection with God. Because God, as you know, as it is right now, he's, He is not a person. He's, he's not like an animal. He's not a rock. He's not the sun. He is just um, this powerful um, um, creator that cares for us. And so we, 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 he wants us to have this connection with him, like spiritually, meaning that, um, you know, to, through his spirit, we have this connection through our mind, through our um, inner being. And, you know, we, all, all that gets, um, it, it gets, better at, you know, it gets um, developed, that's the word I'm looking for, it gets developed, you know, as we read the Bible, as we um, sing a song to Him, as we um, go out on nature and think about the great things that He has done for us, as um, we help others, as, as we show, show love. So that that's the sense that God wants us to be spiritual but unfortunately you know this world has um, been shifted or made so that we don't focus on those things on these spiritual things instead you know we're focusing or on our body you know oh how do I look um, how um, you know, how am I going to dress, or how's my hair, or things like that. We focus on, you know, the appearance of, of other people, and we, we put uh, like this great importance on, on, on these things. We also put importance on material things, you know, cars, or computers, or games, or um, video games, and we, we put importance on these things uh, that are material and you know and also 
you know, we're worried about time, we're running from here to there, but we need to do this, we need to do that, right? But God and the truth about God, He calls us to be spiritual. Sammy. Yes. Stop it. So God has a different plan for us. He wants us to be spiritual beings. He doesn't want us to be focusing on ourselves, on our bodies, and how we look, and our material things, and also time, right? like I said, running from here to there. He wants us to focus on godly things. You know, the Bible calls these other things like worldly things that he doesn't want us to focus on. So focus means that you put your attention on that, that you always or often thinking about those things. And instead he wants us, God wants us to think and be aware of his power. He wants us to be, know that he loves us. He wants us to know that he cares for us. And he wants us to know that he's there for us and we can call him whenever we need him and and that's the truth that's the kingdom of God going to him for for anything that um, any of our, uh, our questions that we may have and any of our desires something that we want to do something that we want to accomplish and he's there to help us and so, re so remember, God loves us, and, and if we have that in our mind, we are able to grow with Him. So as you grow older, as you, you know, have a birthday after another birthday, and another birthday, if this is something that you remember, God loves me and He cares for me, and you have that in your mind, and then you do other things to strengthen that love, like helping others or um, reading the Bible, praying to Him, having this connection with Him. The, um, this awareness of God, this love of God is going to grow. And you will get to know really what the truth is. So, for our craft today, we're going to be doing... Okay, stop it. So, for our craft today, uh, please go to YouTube and find the instructions. You search um, ABC Mouse Optical Illusion Art and with there you will need like a stick. So we're going to use two pencils and then some construction paper that we're going to cut in circles and we're going to glue them, uh, we're going to do like a drawing of a fish on one side and then on the other side like a fish tank and we're going to glue them together and then we're going to spin them and that's going to show you like a optical illusion pretty cool optical illusion that the fish is inside the tank and with that it's going to show us that not all the things that we think that are true are actually true and like I said in the in, in the lesson the only thing that is truly absolutely true is God and his love for us and how he cares for us So here's our crafts, and this is how they turned out.
So again, the point of the craft was to sh show us that not everything that we think that is true or that way we see it is true. The only thing that is true is God and his love for us and has a, he's the creator of this world. As an additional resource for the lesson, I invite you to go to YouTube and search Superbook Road to Damascus and it's the story about Paul and his encounter with Jesus and how he became a follower of Jesus because he knew he Jesus was what he was teaching was the truth. Thank you for joining us. Happy Sabbath. Bye. Bye. Bye.